Can everybody see me down here okay? Or would you rather? Is that better? Queen, princess, one of us. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what if you don't really exist? What if you are actually a figment of your imagination? If I do my job well this morning, you're going to begin questioning the current version of me, you, that you're used to thinking is who you are. And in doing that, maybe open up more freedom for you to unleash more of your natural gifts as a leader to your organization, your customers, your colleagues, your family, your life. So to begin talking about the trance of leadership, I want to introduce you to a story that has had an impact on me for several years now. And it's a story that comes from um, several hundred years ago. And it's about wandering nomadic tribes. And one particular tribe, and this is a true story. Now, if you're a nomadic tribe in the desert, and you're constantly moving, constantly having to be very efficient and resourceful, and so you begin developing rituals that are passed down for hundreds of years that, for instance, when a storm comes from out of nowhere, everybody knows exactly what to do. Exactly. This one has the poles for the tent. This one packs up the food. Everybody knows what to do. And these traditions, these rituals, are handed down again hundreds, thousands of years in this tribe. So I want you to imagine right now that you are children in this tribe of wandering nomads. And in order to efficiently go out and get food, the parents of the tribe have to leave the kids behind. But they need to keep them safe. So they came up with this brilliant way to keep the kids safe. They would gather them all in an oasis. And the mother or a father, one of the parents, would stand in front of them, and this happened week after week, and say, I'm going to draw a circle around the outside of you. Now, they're all gathered in the oasis. They're safe. Around the outside of you, in the sand. So she begins drawing this circle. Draws it all the way around the outside of them. And she says, and if anyone crosses this line, you're going to die. OK? So now let's imagine that, what's your name? Alicia is 10 years old. And Alicia sees, what's your name? Chris, Chris who is her 18-month-old cousin. Now, Alicia is talking with her friends. They're, they're having fun. But out of the corner of her eye, she sees, your name again is? Chris. Chris. 18 months old, he's looking around. Wow, what a cool place. He's having fun. He's discovering things. And he starts getting close to that line. What do you think Alicia does? She says something. Does she say, you know, you, you may not want to go near that line. No, she probably grabs him. No! He gets that in his nervous system. Now imagine everyone in this circle, all these kids, have been getting this message over and over, week by week. OK? So now it's 25 years later. And Alicia um, is now 35. And I'm from a neighboring tribe. And I'm a trickster. I like to play with people. And so um, 
Alicia, you want to stand up for a minute? I come up to Alicia. You want to come up a little closer? And I say, hey, Alicia, how are you doing? And I start doing this. How are the kids? OK? I'm drawing a circle around the outside of her. But, but she's just interacting with me. And then I say, hey, Alicia, come here a minute. I want to show you something. What do you imagine Alicia's going to do? She's going to stay there. She may say, oh, you know, Peggy, I've seen stuff like that before. <laughs> I don't need to do it. She may um, say, um, um, you know, so this, I've seen stuff like that before. This is the trance. This is what psychologists would call a trance. She doesn't even know that something's holding her back. She's just acting automatically. But she may, maybe she's gotten coaching, she may say, you know, I've been noticing that whenever I see a line around me, I feel like my feet are nailed to the floor. I, I can't figure it out. And if she's really begun noticing and being curious about this sense of being stuck, she may say, I am darn sick and tired of feeling limited by this circle. I notice that whenever I'm in certain situations, I feel like I can't move. And that's baloney. I'm an adult now. I'm going to test the limits. I'm going to see what happens. Thank you, Alicia. So what is the circle in your life and leadership that is still hemming you in? For some of us, we may have heard most of our career, you need to start delegating. Anybody relate to that? You need to start delegating. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. But there's some old something that keeps us from doing that. What is it? Some of us may have been told, we need to hear your voice more. You're too quiet. <sighs> Trance. We're smart. We're successful. Why can't we step out? Others may have heard, we need to hear other people's voices in the room. You are always bringing brilliant ideas. But we need to hear somebody else talk in the room, right? Yeah? It's probably the other people you know on your team who do that. So what is it that makes smart, successful people blind to how to move out of the circle? Well, like these kids in the tribe, we all had an experience as a kid where we began taking in information about who we thought we needed to be in order to be safe. And for some of us, we learned that we needed to be the winner. So no matter what situation we're in, we're always vying to be the one on top. I've got to be the one on top. For others of us, the way we learn to stay safe was I need to be the good little kid. I need to be the one who doesn't make anybody upset. I need to avoid conflict. So nobody gets to hear your voice in the room. You never put a stake in the ground and say, this is what I think. For others of us, we learned we needed to be the most brilliant in the room. Bring that game-changing idea all the time. And when we think that we need to be the game changer, the winner, the good girl, the good boy, the smartest one, and that's all we think we can be, we're in a trance. When this thing has us, instead of us saying, you know, right now, I need to be the quarterback carrying the ball down the field. But in the next situation, 
I need to open it up to let everybody else win. When we don't have a sense of choice, when we feel as if we don't win, something terrible is going to happen, we're in a trance. When we think that if we're not seen as the smartest one in the room, we're in a trance. If we think that we have to let authority figures tell us what to do, that we can't put out some idea that might shake people up, we're in a trance. And so just like Alicia, there are three stages to working with us. And the first is we need to understand what our pattern of trance is. What's our particular version of the thing that we haven't been able to get past? The thing that has us, that we're at the mercy of. So first is noticing, I'm in the circle, the circle of safety. The second thing that we need to notice, then, we need to begin questioning, is it really true? Is it really true that I have to be the one bringing the best idea or else? Because with all of these trances, there is an sort of hidden belief that, that, that something drastic, terrible is going to happen. This is the kids, the little kids' mind. Something terrible is going to happen if I don't show up as the smartest, the winner, the nice kid. So noticing the pattern, beginning to say, is that really true? And then testing it. This circle was created by what I would call our lizard brain. When we were little kids, our brains sorted everything around safety. This lizard brain isn't rational, it's, it's, um, and it catches us at a real gut level where we feel like, oh my gosh, if I don't win, the whole world's going to fall apart. If I don't control this, the whole world's going to fall apart. And this, this, this lizard brain, um, in essence, is keeping you playing in a much smaller circle than you deserve to be playing in. And I would pretty much guess that every one of you, if you really began looking at it, has your version of circle. So the invitation here is to begin paying attention to what's hemming you in and to begin questioning what kept the child safe. If that's really in the best interest of you, your leadership, your organization, your family, your life. But don't believe me. Check it out for yourself and see what happens. Thank you.